Hi everyone, welcome to Fridays with a Ranger. My name is Bailey Wickman and I'm a student training park guide for the Lewis and Clark National Historic Trail. I'm actually working from home right now, staying safe from the COVID-19 situation. I'm actually working in my bedroom. I'm sitting at my desk right now and I do also have a lovely picture of Glacier National Park behind me, as well as my two dogs sitting by my side here. So currently sitting in my lap, I have my four-year-old French Bulldog. His name is Finnegan. <laughs> And this is Hazel. She's my three-year-old English Bulldog. And my two dogs have definitely been keeping me company while I navigate working from home. So if you think about it, dogs are considered to be man's best friend. Do you guys have dogs at home? Do you consider them to be your faithful companions or even best friends? And do you think about what they do for you? Much like how Finn and Hazel are for me, Lewis and Clark actually had their own companion with them alongside their expedition to the Pacific Ocean. So I actually do have a replica of Seaman here. Um, he's wearing one of our Junior Ranger badges as well as a white bandana. And I'm just going to set him down here to keep me company while I talk to you guys. Um, so Seaman was in a black Newfoundland, often called a Newfie, that Lewis bought back in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for $20 while he was waiting for his boats to be finished for the journey ahead. Now $20 doesn't really seem like a lot of money, but back then that was quite expensive. Not only was he a little bit more expensive, but he also did have a lot of special features which made him a great addition to the Corps of Discovery. First of all, these guys have webbed paws, much like duck's feet, which help them propel through water way easier than if they had regular paws. What's also great about these guys is that they have an extra fluffy coat, which kept them warm through cold water and other colder climates. These guys also grow very large in size, weighing up to almost 150 pounds, which made it easier for them to carry heavier supplies. They're also definitely avid hunters, which helped Lewis and Clark immensely during their travels. For most of the journey, Lewis and Clark never really mentioned Seaman in their journals, um, so we don't know too many details about his life during the expedition. However, they did record several events which would prove Seaman to be an important member of the crew. Considering just how important he was to the expedition, people who Lewis and Clark met along the way saw Seaman as an essential trade offer. On November 16th of 1803, Lewis and Clark actually met with a group from the Shawnee tribe where the Ohio and Mississippi River meet. They were so fascinated by Seaman that they actually tried trading him off for three beaver skins, but luckily Lewis denied that offer. So at this point in the expedition, Seaman would often go off at night to help hunt and to keep watch over the core while they slept. Lewis and Clark often worried about his return, but they knew that he would eventually always come back. Seaman would often help hunt for smaller animals such as squirrels to help feed the core on their journey. Seaman's hunting karma would later catch up to him because on May 19th of 1805, he had a close call with a beaver that he was trying to catch in the river. The beaver bit the back of his leg and even cut a major artery. This made Lewis worry if he would recover from the injury or not. Um, considering how life-threatening it was, he would actually make a full recovery just 10 days later and be back to normal again. After Seaman made his full recovery, within the same month, he even scared off an adult buffalo that tried charging the crew. It had made its way up the riverbank where Lewis and Clark's men were sleeping and even made within feet of their heads. Luckily, Seaman was there to warn them off and no injuries to the men were made. There would later be another occurrence where a younger buffalo or calf would swim for a visit, but luckily Seaman was there to save the day once more. In the illustration shown, there's a scene where Seaman is guarding the campsite at night. A large buffalo stops by, getting a little too close to the men who were sleeping. Seaman then barks and growls at the buffalo to warn it off. He succeeds in this and is praised by Meriwether Lewis for keeping them safe. The next big event that Lewis and Clark recorded in their journals was when Seaman warned off a full-sized grizzly bear. An adult grizzly bear is about 6 to 8 feet tall and can weigh up to 800 pounds. Now compare that to an adult male Newfoundland, much like Seaman here. Um, they are only 2 to 3 feet tall and can weigh up to 150 pounds. That's a huge difference. I've included a reference picture of what that size difference would have looked like. On the left is an adult grizzly, and on the right is Seaman, the adult Newfoundland, which you could probably fit about five of them into one grizzly bear. Now Lewis and Clark weren't really new on bear encounters, as they had seen them previously, but without Seaman, who knows what they would have done. Because of all of these events, Seaman was seen as a token member to the Corps of Discovery, and a hero throughout the expedition, so many often wonder what happened to him after the crew returned in 1806. Unfortunately, semen isn't discussed throughout the journals after the crew made it back home safely. However, it is assumed that he lived out the rest of his life happily with Lewis. 
We still celebrate Seaman as one of the greatest canine explorers in history, and to remember his journey on the Lewis and Clark expedition, we sent him to space. To commemorate or remember NASA's 60th anniversary on October 1st of 2018 and the 50th anniversary of the National Trails Act on October 2nd of 2018, the National Park Service and NASA worked together to send Seaman out to space. Here I'm showing a picture of Seaman Jr., the small toy plush animal who was sent to the International Space Station. The replica of Seaman floated in space for about four months before returning to Earth in November of 2018. In the picture, Seaman Jr. is standing in front of NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, getting ready for the launch into space. So why up to space, you might ask? Well, Seaman is very familiar with adventure, and we thought it would be a great idea to have him explore the next frontier, much like how he did with Lewis and Clark. I've included an image of Seaman Jr., a plush who's standing in for the real Seaman. The plush is sitting in the hands of an astronaut's spacesuit at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston. And if you're interested in finding more about Seaman's adventures in space with NASA, you can visit our webpage at nps.gov forward slash lecl. Anyways, that's all I have for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and tune in next week for more Fridays with a Ranger. Stay safe, everyone.